السلام علیکم مائی سیلف بسمائل یاس ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ آل آف یو آر ویل دا ویڈیو آن دس ٹاپک از اباؤٹ موومنٹس اینڈ مسلس آئی ہوپ دس ویڈیو از ویری ہیلپ فل فار یو ان دس ویڈیو وی ول ڈسکس دی موومنٹس اینڈ مسل اینڈ دی اسٹرکچرل بیسز آف مسلس کنٹریکشن سو لیٹ اسٹارٹ First of all, we will discuss the structure of skeletal muscles. In, in this diagram, you will see that muscles consist of number of muscles fiber. The muscles fiber consist of numerous myofibril. Each myofibril consists of regular arrangement of cytoskeletal component that is thick filament and thin filament. Have an overview. In the organization in the skeletal muscle, you will see that muscles made up of muscles bundle and muscles bundle made up of muscles fiber, muscles fiber made up of myofibril and zooming out this section of myofibril, you will see that myofibril composed of thick filament and thin filament. The thick filament and thin filament basically compose of two contractile protein that is actin and myosin. E these two protein comprises the functional unit of muscle that is sarcomere. Now what is sarcomere? The sarcomere is the basic functional and contractile unit. and it contains a band and i band basically the a band is thick filament made up of myosin and the i band is thin filament made up of actin during the contraction of muscles these two filaments overlap each other the size of sarcomere reduce and the con muscles contract come towards the structure of thick filament the thick filament consists of several myosin molecule myosin is basically a contractile protein consisting of two identical subunit the one portion is tail portion and the other portion is head portion in the head portion there are two binding site one is actin binding site and the other one is myosin myosin atps side now moving toward the structure of thin filament the thin filament com composed of three main components actin troponin and tropomyosin you will see that in the actin molecules there is a binding site for the attachment of myosin actin form a helical like structure on which troponin and tropomyosin overlaps forming the thin filament structure here you will see the binding site for the myosin is blocked by troponin and tropomyosin how these sites are unblocked these sites are unblocked by the calcium which are secreted in the cytosol now come towards the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it function sarcoplasmic reticulum basically is the modification of endoplasmic reticulum it is a fine membranous network that runs longitudinally and surround each myofibril sarcoplasmic basically secrete calcium ion in the cystole so it's play important role in the muscles contraction and relaxation now come the process of muscles contraction and relaxation which involve many steps the first steps begin when a signal come from brain at neuromuscular junction and at the neuromuscular junction you will see it triggers the actional potential in the next step trigger of action potential at neuromuscular junction release acetylcholine in the muscles fiber 
This acetylcholine basically stimulates the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release cyto calcium in the cytosol. Now calcium is releases. Why the calcium is so necessary for the muscles contraction and relaxation? You will see that in the absence of calcium there is no excitation of muscles fiber, no cross pitch formation, muscles are in relaxed state. But in the presence of calcium, the muscles fiber are excited. The cross pitch between actin and myosin forms and muscles contract. So for the contraction of muscle, there is a basically needed sarcoplasmic reticulum to secrete calcium in this stall. Now moving towards the fourth step, the calcium when releases in systol, its bind towards to the troponin causes tropomyosin to change the position so that actin and myosin cross pitch form. In the meanwhile, ADP plus inorganic phosphate are bound to myosin head. When the binding sites for the actin are free for the attachment of myosin, then the ADP release and the cross pitch between actin and myosin form. Actin moves and the muscles contract. Now the muscles contract, but muscles have to come to its original position. For this, the bridge between cross pitch between actin and myosin have to detach. For this, the when the free ATP comes to the head of myosin, the binding of ATP causes myosin to return to its original position so that the contraction stops, myosin head unattached and returns to its original position. Now the muscles come to its relaxed position. There is a condition known as rigor mortis. In this condition, a cross linkage between actin and myosin doesn't break so that muscle remain in this position and become stiffened. That's why free ATP is needed for pumping calcium and breaking actin and myosin linkage. If the free ATP is not present, then muscles does not come to its original position and becomes stiffened, which condition is known as rigor mortis. Thanks all of you for paying your attention.